Jacob, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us at Director's Notes. Um, would you like to start just by sort of introducing yourself and your film? Nice, yeah. Um, so uh, I'm Jacob. Um, I say I'm an artist and film director um, who I've done, started off making sort of stop motion animations um, about three years ago. And then I was in Bristol, um, had like an animation studio there. And often when like I would, I was animating because I had uh, like long periods of time, I listened to really loud uh, electronic music, drink lots of coffee. And whenever, you know, a couple of frames came together and it was really good, um, I'd often start dancing to whatever I was listening to. And I've been a huge fan of John Hopkins for, for ages. Yeah. Um, but I'd sort of listened to all his music to such an extent, or his more re most recent stuff, that I was kind of like looking for something new. So I I, I listened to some of, uh, one of his older, older albums and heard the song of Drifting Up and started doing this like ridiculous Irish jig, which uh, features in the film. Um, and at first I was like, oh man, like I look amazing. Like this must <laughs> look so good. And then I like put on like a photo booth on my, my computer and um, videoed myself and realized I actually looked terrible. But um, yeah, they just gave me the idea for the film to, to kind of go with it, yeah. So you mentioned you sort of background in stop motion. How was it moving into like a completely different realm and making this documentary? Um, I think it, it didn't seem that different. Um, I guess like my style so far has been quite sort of obsessive. Um, so I was going out quite a lot and also it was mostly done on my own which um, obviously stop motion animation is kind of a solitary thing. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously I'm interacting with people in the public and my friends and stuff like that. But the actual making of the film was kind of all done mostly uh, by myself. So it didn't seem like it was that such a, it wasn't like I was, you know, directing like 30 people or, you know, whatever. Um, and I guess from the editing side of the film, which was like a huge part of it, um, having done animation and being comfortable with things like After Effects and, um, you know, editing software, it felt much, it, it, I sort of tried to incorporate things I'd learned through doing animation into the sort of edit of the film. Okay. Um, I'll touch upon the edit later, but sort of what I wanted, you've got like, what is it, a hundred hours of footage, which is incredible. Did you have a plan of where you were gonna shoot it? Sort of what time of day? And how did you move forward into that? Because it's an epic amount. To begin with, it was like the first three weeks, I was going to be dancing with my headphones on. And then I became like semi-obsessed with like lamps turning on. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's like this really amazing poem. Oh, anyway, but it's got this line, I see the lamps come on at six. And I just became so obsessed with it and couldn't work out whether it was like light sensitive or whether it was like a fixed time of day that they were turned on. So I guess there was like me dancing on my own with the headphones on and then me also going out between setting up the camera to video me dancing and like trying to capture bits of city life that I thought was beautiful or um, that kind of was in line with the vision I had for the film. Um, and then I knew that after three weeks, I was going to buy a boombox, put a, out a sign saying, coming off antidepressants, come dance with me. And then sort of, um, yeah, take the headphones off and, and see if people responded to that. What did you film on? Uh, so it was a, it's like, I think it's the first digital camera to full, like fully be digital. So it's it's like one of the old skate uh, cameras, the Panasonic um, HPX 170. And they use these amazing P2 cards, which are like that big, <laughs> like huge. Um, but they're like 32 gigabytes. So were you just like putting your camera on the side of the road, hoping that nobody nicks it? Yeah, I think so. And that was kind of that was kind of part of the reason why I chose that camera because it it didn't look I mean, it looked like professional, but it was a bit beaten up and it cost 500 quid. So it would have been bad if it got nicked, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's still a lot of money, but 
you know, it's not like tang around or anything. No, of course. Um, and so what was then the journey from the initial dancing on your own with your headphones on to the boom box and you can see the interaction with the public? How was that? It was interesting. Like with my headphones on, I generally only danced like 10, 10 minutes max because it would just get boring. And the first time I did it, I was like, okay, I'm going to go into the heart of darkness. Like, well, it's not the heart of darkness, but it, it, like, there's, I'm sure some really good stuff goes on there. But I went to the city of London because I thought, what's the most terrifying place I can go to? And I set it up. And I actually was more nervous about people judging my music taste. <laughs> um, but the cool thing about that was it, I, I stayed there. I danced for like an hour and a half. And it, it just made it it was so obvious that it was so much more fun for me and engaging when everyone was part of it, even if they were just walking past. Whereas like, if you've got your headphones on, it's like, you're just like a crazy person dancing <laughs> on your own. But yeah, that was, that was really cool. I was really nervous and I, and I, I left being like really positive about the whole thing. So. Were you surprised with how much people would engage with you? I mean, that's the, the joy of editing is you can cut out like, long periods when no one was kind of in, getting involved. Um, but yeah, I mean, I felt really, really lucky to get the the, the moments that I did get. Um, and, and I didn't have a single person like shouting at me, like, you know, like shouting anything negative at me. There are quite a few crazy people like, you know, hang around and you just chat to them and whatever. It was quite nice, but I never had any aggression or, or like negativity around it so because yeah. that's I think that's one of the most beautiful things um you know it's just seeing everyone engaging with you and getting into it and interacting and I don't know for me maybe this is just my negative view but it's not what you'd expect I think I'd expect the great British public to sort of put you in the loony bin or something but it was just really beautiful to see that yeah yeah no it was and I think the thing is it's like I think you know we yeah like British people definitely have that, like where they're, they're standoffish to begin with. But I think, I don't know, I, I felt like there was, when people stopped, they like got involved properly. Okay, so now let's move on to your massive edit. So you had yeah. all this footage. Did you have a sort of plan of what it wants to look like or how did you approach all of that? So the first two months were literally just like white knuckling, just like watching the footage through and compiling it and I literally just watching it through once and that that was pretty exhausting um and then so I cut it down from about 100 100 hours to about I don't know like 20 or 30 hours um and then I went for a coffee with my friend Giorgio who runs Creatures which is like a really amazing anyway he he was um he was like you should try and you know sharpen your tools so I hadn't really thought of this and I didn't even know what, the, like, I didn't even know what the film was going to be. Like I didn't know how to organize it. I didn't know how to edit it. And it was just this constant source of like incredible panic about like, what the hell am I I'm going to do with this? But I ended up splitting it up into like lights, streets, tube, um, people dancing, uh, me dancing, dancing with others, dance, uh, other people dancing, um, nature um and then so so once i split that all up which again took really a long time what was really the like one moment where it was that like, it felt like there was a big release was that the middle part of the film there's like three rainbow sections mm -hmm. so it starts off with imagery non-dancing imagery or maybe a bit of dancing imagery where it starts and it goes through like each color of the rainbow and then there's the birds flying um across the, the i think it's um ual and elephant and castle it's like this rainbow building and then it's the the tube holes and once i got that bit edited i was it was so ecstatic i just was like dancing around i felt like that was the key into because i knew that was that was great like i knew i wanted to keep that and then it was just a case of organizing the film around that yeah um and also it was originally just going to be the john hopkins song so it was going to be no like other other songs in like um but my friend phoebe again said it'd be more interesting if there was a mixture so ended up having that middle section and was it 
a challenge to sort of weave in your images and your dancing to the music and the beats? I find I get a lot of inspiration from music and the animations I've done, but also this film have very much been like an imaginative response to the to the song itself. So a lot of the like sketchiness of that song informed the sort of images I wanted to find um, and also the way I wanted to edit it together that, you know, like a really, and the, and the dance that I did as well is very much like, that's not how I dance normally, usually, I don't know, but <laughs> yeah. I, it, it's all kind of grown organically from the song rather than the song being like a soundtrack. To, yeah. Yeah. So what does, what does the BAFTA nomination mean to you? Um, it means, yeah, so, so much. I mean, it was really unexpected and I'm super grateful to BAFTA and to uh, the people who voted for it, you know, like for, for, for getting it this far. You know, like I'm sure like everyone else, like, you know, my dream is to, is to make more films. I have more films in, in my mind that I would like to make in my career and and I see this as like a you know hopefully a, a good start like to, to getting to the to, to those films being made um you know I'm so grateful that I found filmmaking because I was kind of lost for a kind of long time and um so yeah it's just a great milestone and 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 hopefully will help me get to where I want to want to get to so what's next what are you working on now uh, so I'm doing a, a short film about um, sort of imagination and reality, like a short um, on the tube. Um, so we're shooting it on this Sunday and then the 17th of February, um, which I'm really excited about and nervous about, um, you know, working with real people. And... uh have experience in that now. Yeah, I know no, I have, but... Um, you know, in terms of like structures of like DOP and producers and stuff. But yeah, that's kind of the direction I want to move in. So I'm really excited for it. Amazing. Well, look, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. Um, no, thank you. I really, yeah, really appreciate it. No, and your film, it's, it's a breath of fresh air. It really is. And good thank luck. Thank you very you. much.